My name is Debbie Hickman, author of The Exasperated Clock and three more books. Here's a glimpse of what I'm all about. I was born in the Pacific Northwest, specifically Vancouver, Washington. However, I spent my childhood in Lewiston, Idaho. My father was a logger, and at times we'd get to go out with him in the woods and mostly watched him cut down trees and look for animals. And one day my dad brought home a baby deer from work. And you can imagine how excited we were. The story was that the mother had died after being hit by a falling tree. My two sisters and brother and I loved that deer. After a couple of years, the game department decided a deer running around the neighborhood was not a good idea, and there probably were laws. It was sad to see family go, but life goes on. And later we learned that there was no mother deer that got killed. Upon graduating from the University of Idaho, I got my first teaching job in Seattle and stayed for three years. At this time, my future husband was teaching in Cody Canal, India, and I decided to visit him there. I love the scenery in India and the colorful Indian culture, but the poverty, oh, the poverty. And on our first Christmas break in India, we got married in Switzerland. And a couple of years later, we joined the Peace Corps and were assigned to Bahrain, where there was a lot of culture shock. But we survived. The best thing that came out of that experience was having our son, Matt. After Bahrain, we moved to Tempe, Arizona. I pursued a master's degree in English while my husband was getting his doctorate. And again, the best part of that time was having our daughter, Monica. After graduating from ASU, we decided to continue the adventures and we spent 11 years teaching in Ganado on the Navajo Reservation in Northern Arizona. This is where I started telling my students the story of the exasperated clock. And then time goes by. Our children were grown and we decided to find jobs overseas again. We started in Kuwait teaching at the Universal American School. After a month there, 9-11 happened. There was school the next day, so I asked my fourth graders to write what they knew had happened. And out of all 15 students, I had only one that said the Americans deserved to be murdered. After two years in Kuwait, we spent four years teaching at the Tarsus American School in Turkey. The people in Turkey overwhelmed us with their kindness and generosity. And to this day, when I get asked about my favorite place, I still reply Turkey. Near International School in Almaty, Kazakhstan was our next place to teach. It was very cold there at times. I kept reminding myself that we really were close to Siberia. Um, and there was a lot of culture shock too there, but um, I'll leave that when somebody else was it. <laughs> we moved on after two years to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, teaching at the Mount Kiara International School. Luckily, the temperature and humidity was the opposite of Kazakhstan, and we spent three wonderful years teaching them. Then we left in 2012 and returned to Sierra Vista. Now I had time to turn the stories that I've been telling my students over the years into real books. And at this writing, I have four books published. The Exasperated Clock, What's Up Seven, The Inside Story of Ten, Six the Scientist, and Nine is Out of This World is forthcoming. When I'm not working on my books, I have several hobbies. I play the piano, I play tennis and pickleball, I ride my electric bike, which I love. I do Zentangle designs, I love to bake, and I walk our beautiful dog. I'm gonna play a sonata that I learned during the pandemic. 
it really gave me something to do because it was getting harder and harder by the weeks and months. Okay, so it's called the Sonata in C by Mozart, but only a bit. <laughs> like to tell you uh, a little bit about what the exasperated cloth is about. In the exasperated cloth, the 12 numbers on the clock are silly, noisy, and irresponsible. Consequently, the clock decides to throw each of the numbers off which becomes quite a problem because the numbers are on their own afterwards and are clueless. Eventually, each number finds a better job than working on that boring clock. Kids will giggle their way through this book, laughing at the antiques of the numbers and their gainful, whimsical, and surreal employment. Writing this book just seemed to be such a natural thing to do. And because of the responses the children had when I was reading, telling them the story, and it, I told so many children the story that I got to thinking, they can't tell the story. You know, I, I need to actually get it down on paper and do something about this. And the funny thing is, though, the way I came up with this idea, which a lot of people want to know, is that when I was on the Navajo reservation and the students were there and we were, the teachers were all having to select a new math book, a text for them. And what happened is, I couldn't even figure out which one was better than the other. These textbooks are pretty dry. <laughs> and then I said, why don't I find, why, what if I found a book that had uh, what mathematicians might say about math? So the next time we got to a bookstore, I got lucky. <laughs> and there was a book that uh, mathematicians were saying, numbers are my friends. <laughs> I thought, there's nothing in those uh, companies' textbooks <laughs> that ever want to make numbers your friends. So, if the, you know, so then I figure I had to do that. And I guess what happened is I must have looked at the clock and thought, well, the clock, numbers are your friends. So why shouldn't they be more animated and with personalities. And all of a sudden, it just came to me, I've got to do this book. And so 
And I also was very inspired by the children trying to say, well, I've got kids now wanting, when's your next book coming out? And that was really fun. And that's how I got the idea because it was just connections, you know, connecting dots is what creativity is all about. I write these kind of books and, and the way I do, because I'm assuming, of course, that you're talking about their numbers and not people. And the reason I do that is, it's more freedom. The clock is the main character and her personality has developed in certain ways, but she is sort of an, an, an analogy to a classroom teacher <laughs> when you've got 20 to 30 kids in your class and they're driving you nuts and, and the kids quickly learn the word exasperated. And I say, did you ever uh, have a place where somebody you might, like maybe your mother was exasperated one time? Oh yeah, they go. And then just in classrooms. I mean, having been in them for so many years, I found that you had to find some really quick new ways to get rid of <laughs> some of the problem. And, um, you know, I couldn't throw them off. So she's just become a very, uh, oh, she's taken it to another dimension. <laughs> oh, exactly. I love to talk about the characters that I have come up with and given them personalities. And after the clock, you know, did her number on them <laughs> and uh, threw them off. The next book I wrote was What's Up Seven? And Seven definitely has his own character. He, first of all, is very depressed in the beginning of the book. And Eight comes along and she says, what? Why are you sitting in the rain without an umbrella? And Seven says, well, I like sitting in the rain. And are you having a bad day, Eight asks? No, I'm having a bad life, answered Seven. And why is that? And as that story goes on, Eight reassures him and is very confident of him and uh, that he can do something else. So she keeps saying to him, maybe you just haven't found the right job. And so she gives him two dice and she says, roll them because, and see if you come up more often, because you add the ones on the top of the dice. And um, he um, did that. And then he became a whole new number. And he ran around the world and doing things like that. Uh, and he liked to uh, just find places where seven is important. Next is number six. And number six has a personality that probably everybody can recognize if you start reading it, because Six thinks he is really, really smart, and he's kind of um, proud and arrogant. Wow, I had the illustration in mind since day one. I envisioned this story, I knew the illustrations had to be something that compelled the children to read it. And I think I succeeded because I had so many comments from the kids about, oh, who's your, who's the illustrator? You know, it's about, but I actually was envisioning all the way along something like this and it needed my expectations and more. The outcome turned out to be exactly what I envisioned. I would like to see the children get out of this book and what lessons is that their mind is their playground and also it would give permission to children to 
not be afraid of their ideas or anything. They can use their mind to explore and create. Um, well, you can get it through Authors Press, The Exasperated Clock, and uh, on Amazon, of course. And uh, uh, like all those other stores that I can't remember, but they're great. And um, and all of, there'd be all four books on there. This is Debbie Hickman, and I'm the author of The Exasperated Clock. And thank you so much for watching this video.